My friend has $780 to spend on a fence for her rectangular garden. She wants to use cedar fencing, which costs $16 per foot on one side, and cheaper metal fencing, which costs $10 per foot for the three other sides. What are the dimensions of the garden with the largest area she can enclose, and what is the largest area? Let's use this rectangle to help us set up the problem. We'll label two sides L for length, and two sides W for width. And again, one of the sides is going to cost $16 per foot. The other three sides will cost $10 per foot. So let's go ahead and let the length of this side here be where the fence is going to cost $16 per foot. The other three sides are going to cost $10 per foot. Because she has $780 to spend, we can now set up a cost equation where the cost of each side is going to be the cost per foot times the length of the side. So the cost would be 16 times L or 16L plus 10 times L or 10L plus 10 times W or 10W plus another 10 times W or 10W. And this must equal $780. Combining like terms, we have 26L plus 20W equals 780. Now again, our goal here is to maximize the area of the garden, where the area of the garden, A, is equal to length times width. Because we want to maximize the area, we need to write the area equation in terms of one variable rather than two. To do this, we'll use this equation here, which is called the constraint, to solve for L or W. Then we'll make a substitution into the area equation. It doesn't matter which variable we solve for, Let's go ahead and solve for W. So for the next step, we'll subtract 26L on both sides, which will give us 20W equals 780 minus 26L. And now we'll divide both sides by 20. Simplifying, we have W equals 780 divided by 20 is equal to 39 minus 26 twentieths simplifies to 13 tenths. So we have 13 tenths L. 26 and 20 share a common factor of 2. Now that we know that W equals 39 minus 13 tenths L, we can perform a substitution for W in the area equation. We now know the area is equal to L times the quantity 39 minus 13 tenths L. Distributing, we have A equals, let's write the L squared term first. So we'd have negative 13 tenths L squared plus 39 L. Now from here, we need to recognize that we have a quadratic equation or a quadratic function. So if we were to graph this function, the shape would be a parabola or a U shape. And because the coefficient of the squared term is negative, the parabola opens down and therefore to maximize the area, we need to find the vertex of the parabola. For a quick review, in general, if we have a quadratic function or equation in this form here, f of x or y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, again, if a is positive, the parabola opens up. If a is negative, the parabola opens down. Either way, we can find the low point or the high point called the vertex of the parabola using the formula given here, where the x-coordinate is equal to negative b divided by 2a, and the corresponding function value, or y-value, is equal to f of negative b divided by 2a, meaning we take this x-value and perform substitution for the input variable into the equation or function. So if we take a look at the graph of our area equation, or area function, it looks like this. And again, because we're trying to maximize the area, we define the vertex, which is this point here. It's the high point of the graph, where the first coordinate of the vertex is going to give us the length that maximizes the area. And the second coordinate is going to be the A coordinate, which will give us what the maximum area would be. When using graphing software, we normally have to use x and y, so this equation is equivalent 
where x is equal to L and y is equal to A. So using our equation here for the area, let's work on determining the vertex. Let's first identify A, B, and C from our equation. A is the coefficient of the squared term, so A equals negative 13 tenths. B is the coefficient of the degree one term, so B equals 39. And we don't need C to find the vertex, but C is the constant term, which would be zero. So the x-coordinate of the vertex, or in our case, the l-coordinate, is equal to negative b divided by 2a, which in this case would be negative 39 divided by 2 times negative 13 tenths. So we have negative 39 over, we multiply 2 and negative 13 tenths. We can simplify before multiplying. This is 2 over 1. 2 and 10 share a common factor of 2. There's 1, 2, and 2, and 5 twos in 10. So this product is negative 13 fifths. From here, this fraction bar means division. So we can write this as negative 39 as a fraction. This would be negative 39 over 1, and then divided by negative 13 fifths which is the same as negative 39 over 1 times a reciprocal of negative 5 thirteenths. We can perform multiplying. We can simplify. 39 and 13 share a common factor of 13. There's 1 13 and 13 and 3 13 and 39. Just be careful, this is really negative 3. So this product is negative 3 times negative 5, which equals positive 15. So now we know the L-coordinate of the vertex is 15, and now let's find the A-coordinate by substituting L equals 15 into our area function. A of 15 is equal to negative 13 tenths times 15 squared plus 39 times 15. We could have also used the area equation in factored form. We'll go ahead and leave it in this form and evaluate this using the calculator. So we have negative 13 divided by 10 times 15 squared plus 39 times 15, which gives us 292.5, which means 292.5 square feet is the maximum area. Going back to our graph just for a moment, our graph does seem to verify our work is correct. Notice how the L coordinate is 15, and the A coordinate does look like is 292.5. So now let's go back and answer our questions. We now know the largest possible area that can be enclosed is 292.5 square feet. And then for the dimensions, we're asked to give the length for the cedar side. Remember, the cedar side is the side that costs $16 per foot, which is the value of L, which we found to be 15. We have not found the width for these two sides. We'll have to use our equation here, W equals 39 minus 13 tenths times L. So let's go ahead and show that here. The width is equal to 39 minus 13 tenths times 15. We'll go ahead and evaluate this using the calculator. So we have 39 minus 13 divided by 10 times 15, which gives us 19.5. So the width for the other side is 19.5 or 19 and a half feet. I hope you found this helpful.